with that understanding, just providing, you know, support and taking things off of um, my teacher's plate. Mm-hmm. My teacher's plates, the teachers I supervise plates mm-hmm. like. engagement, rigor, success. Here on Coaching You Through All Things Education podcast, we are building a legacy of success together. One episode at a time, each Tuesday at noon. As your host, Anne Labangana Clay of ANC Unlimited, We will unpack relevant topics in education together. And when I'm not podcasting, coaching, or consulting, stop by our website, acunlimited.org, for our new blog, Coaching You EDU, and a menu of services. If something resonates with you during this episode, message me on the podcast app of your choice, or leave a comment on LinkedIn, our company Facebook page, or on Twitter. Our guests appreciate your feedback. Check out the story notes for our social media details. And certainly, if you have an episode suggestion, send it to coachingallthingsedu at gmail.com. Now let's dive in. Welcome to part three of our Thriving Leadership in Education series on episode 21 of Coaching You Through All Things Education podcast. We are honored to have with us today Assistant Principal Rashad Pitt. He is an overcomer and an Assistant Principal at the George With High School in Virginia. Need I say any more? Welcome, Assistant Principal Pitt. Thank you and good morning. Good morning. Can you please tell our listening audience a little bit about yourself? Um, Thank you. And I just want to thank you for the opportunity. Um, Ms. Anna, I really appreciate, um, you know, I reached out to you a couple of weeks ago and, um, you know, just shared that I wanted just to, an opportunity to um, highlight you and 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 speak to from a lens, and I appreciate you granting this opportunity. Hello, so I'm gonna proceed to the question. Um, I am uh, been in education over, well, going into my 16th year. I was a classroom teacher um, for 13, 12 years, and uh, at Peabody in the middle school, well, being mainly secondary, um, middle school through high school. Um, in, uh, ninth, uh, nine years as a middle school teacher, and then the last um, two to three years between um, high school in a correctional facility, um, and also back into um, an admin role as a middle school uh, support or called a success coordinator. Mm. Um, the last three years, I've been in an administrative role from dean of students, and currently as an assistant principal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. What a journey, you know, um, you know, leaders, current leaders in buildings have different journeys. Some, you know, go straight from the classroom right into, um, you know, uh, an admin role. And I love the fact that you have had so much time in the classroom, not to, not to, you know, um, say anything wrong about jumping from the classroom, you know, quickly um, after just a few years into leadership. But I think there's something to say you bring something to the table as well in a different way because you've had the um, the longevity with classroom experience, um, which is very helpful, right? When you walk into a teacher's classroom, um, whether it be 
just a walk through, uh, saying hi, you know, a check in or a formal observation. So thank you so much for sharing your journey to getting to the point where you are today. All right, question number two. Leading during a pandemic is unprecedented in our lifetime. Seeing things with a growth mindset lens, what's one thing you've learned to do since March of 2020 that benefits your school? Um, and thank you again. I From March uh, to where we are now, I think, um, just real, I understand that in all of my years, and I will say, Ms. Ann, also in your years, that we've never taught in a virtual setting. Right. <laughs> and, and, with under, and with that understanding, just providing, you know, support and taking things off of um, my teacher's plate, mm -hmm. my teacher's plate, the teachers I supervise plates, mm -hmm. like um, understanding that there's you no, know, I had many of teachers, including myself, that were not only teaching students, but also supporting their own children. Mm -hmm. So what are some things that I can do to support them, whether that make phone calls, whether it's making home visits, whatever that need, whatever the need was, taking things off of their plate so their teachers feel supported. Um, that, I mean, that's really at the end of the day, you know, whatever they didn't understand, whatever questions I can get answered for them, mm -hmm. just provide as much support as possible because it takes really, it's really a lot to, you know, provide as much in, instructional support on in sure. understanding the technologies that are, that are associated, depending on the platform that you're using. Mm -hmm. So what can I do to make the transition for them as, as simple and as easy as possible. And I feel like I've, you know, I've done that. And um, even in, you know, providing an observation, you know, when I'm conducting observations, sure. just try to highlight as much positivity. And, you know, there's some things that they you, you can't expect them to cover and, and not being so rigid in my, mm -hmm. my feedback, but just being very flexible and, and supporting in grace. Wow. I l <laughs> if you've heard other podcasts before that word grace just hits me, uh, you know, because that we all need it, right? Um, we all need to be to give grace to ourselves. We all need to uh, give grace to others. And it's wonderful to hear that um, as an administrator, I bet your staff uh, really appreciates um, the fact that you that you have that mindset and that you act upon it. I want to touch on a couple points that you made. Um, I resonated with some things because as an instructional coach, um, I also support, right, um, your st um, staff with what I'm calling adult SEL. So you named different things uh, according to what the teacher needed, home visits, to take that off their plate, right? Um, whether it be phone calls, that's a form of taking care of or or uh, worrying about the well-being of your staff, right? Um, and and doing something to help and support that way. But I also heard you say that you support them instructionally, you know, in the sense of they're doing their best. You can tell, right? The teachers are working overtime <laughs> to figure things out and to uh, solve problems related to technology and uh, connecting with students and engagement and you uh, support them there as well. So thank you so much for unpacking that. That's so important. Um, you know, particularly, the, uh, unfortunately, because of what's happening, you know, education's sort of like on a, a in a spotlight right now in the country. And we are finding that people are taking little snippets, right, of what they see or what they hear, or what they're, um, you know, or they think they heard or think they saw. And, um, you know, it's wonderful when you as an administrator can advocate, right? You're, you're trying to support them and say, hey, 
you know, the world may say this, but I know you got this and you're doing it, you know? So thank you very much uh, for that. All right, our next question. So the pandemic has taken a toll on everyone's emotions. What keeps you grounded to lead with purpose? Um, I, I would say that uh, just being, um, just remembering uh, my role uh, that at any time, if I were to pass away, that, uh, that my job will be posted and that this is not forever, you know what I'm saying? So it's best to treat people with respect and uh, just find ways to just reassure and, and again, just always support. Um, I'm still, a, I'm a father, you know, and my children are doing their work and their hardest. So just remember that this title, um, I can't take this title with me when I pass away. And yes. mm -hmm. as, as quick as I got the position, it can be snatched from me. Mm -hmm. And just remember how I'm just treating individuals daily, that I'm treating them with respect and dignity because right. um, everybody's job is important and we're all working together. And that's why I keep in mind, you know, this leadership role. Ad administrators get beheaded often professionally. Uh, mm -hmm. So as quick as you get in this job, you can quickly be, be put back, back in the classroom. Well, so that's what we just got to keep in mind and not saying that's a, ne a negative thing, but you can get no. quickly demoted. Um, so that's what I remember all the times that life is full of swift transitions. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, you can't take this title with you, right? And everyone's role is important. And sometimes, um, you know, leadership in buildings whether it be a, be a building leader you know like yourself and your principal or whether it be a teacher leader a team lead a leader of a committee uh you know etc sometimes unfortunately they are looked at as different you know um and for you to say as a building leader that everyone's role is important that's key that gives me a sense of the culture of your building, um, which, of course, right, flows into the culture of the classrooms. Everyone's role is important. Respect, I heard you say, and certainly, again, support. Thank you for that. We'll be right back with more from Assistant Principal Rashad Pitt. Dear teacher, do you need strategies and resources for individualized instruction, innovative lessons, small group instruction, or student engagement? We can help you with this and more. We have 26 years of teaching and consulting experience in pre-K through 12th grades, as well as experience in adult professional development. We design and present custom-made, self-paced online webinars and in-person workshops for teachers and parents as well. We also provide lesson plan support interview coaching, proven scholarship tips, and tutor referrals. And that's why ANC Unlimited is just that, unlimited. We offer quality work in everything we do, or we don't do it. So contact us today to help you take the stress out of education by visiting our website at acunlimited.org. Or you can reach us via email at a and c dot unlimited the number four y o u at gmail dot com. We look forward to connecting with you soon.
We're back with more from Assistant Principal Rashad Pitt. All right, question number four. Leaders need self-care too. What has been your self-care game plan during the pandemic? So I would say um, between going to the gym, um, definitely, yeah, the gym. You know, I have uh, participated in some um, boxing classes. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely uh, the last last school year when I was um, when I was working in Hampton, uh, I worked a lot on Saturdays, but I was also um, in a doctoral program, mm-hmm. and I just was not able to uh go to church like i wanted to oh, so yes. uh, with the change of me being closer to um uh, my children because i came back to richmond because mm-hmm. uh, i was commuting from hampton from richmond to hampton oh, um yes. i was able to go to my uh attend services more regularly i'm not saying that i'm like uh like a evangelist or anything but just the opportunity to um commune with the brethren and, the, um, sure. and the, the, the congregation has been helpful and just being close to my children. I just mm. seeing um, the difference in their behavior with me being closer to home. Yeah. Um, just all just the fan, that fan, that, that familial dynamic, just mm-hmm. I definitely see a difference there. Their grades have been um, gotten better, their, their behavior and just watching them be able to mature and, spending so much that that time with them rather than just talking to them on a fire when i'm driving and picking them up and we're moving and moving and moving just be able to sit (laughs) and just hear them talking like wow they're growing up so fast and dang i didn't know that they knew that and wow their vocabulary is growing so i was just i would say the fatherhood the transition of fatherhood and watching my children's children mature um having an outlet with you know working out and um the opportunity just to sit and reflect have definitely some things that uh you know watching the different documentaries and reading some books and uh, um interaction with my uh um faith-based organization yes yes well you summed it up for me i don't need to (laughs) recap what you said but, um, you know, certainly all of those things are ways that, you know, not just yourself, but a lot of people around the world um, engage in self-care, you know. Um, self-care looks different for different people according to what you need, and that's the hence word is self-care, right? So those are some great reflections. and. Um, I resonate with some of those. My husband more on the boxing and the gym <laughs> than myself. Um, but definitely um, the place of worship, having that fellowship as well, time to reflect and um, and family, you know, being a, a mom is, is amazing. So um, I totally understand what you're saying there. We're going to move on to our next question. What legacy do you want to leave as a leader? Um, that I respected all dynamics of and, and, and um, parts of you know this this education forum. Mm-hmm. This platform that I was, you know, I was re- respected all areas, and everyone. It was an inclusive environment with my leadership. Ah, uh, yes. So I wanted to, you know, of course, be very facilitative and communal, and having to get everyone's binding, and also being able, you know, be directive in my leadership. But everyone has yeah. has a voice. But also, there's a time for me to, you know, I have to make a decision, and that is in the best interest of of all our learners. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I heard inclusive leadership and directive leadership, and it is a balance, um, as you shared. And again, I'm I'm sure your staff is very appreciative, you know, of having a voice when it's time. 
Um, and then there are times as leaders, right? As you're saying, you have to make that decision. But it's I'm so glad, and I knew you would say that, um, that when you make those decisions, they're what's best for kids, right? Like often as adults, we think of what's best for us. I mean, sadly, uh, you know, but particularly in education, I'd like to believe that educators around the globe um, and leaders in education around the globe do what's best for kids. And I'm, I'm definitely seeing more of that it, through our social media, um, particularly in our own state here in Delaware and yours in Virginia. I've been keeping up with some of the um, some of the schools and districts in your state as well are are making some very uh, positive decisions despite COVID. Uh, what in what's the name? What's the name? In what's best for kids? So that's really exciting. Thank you so much. And I'm sh and I am absolutely sure <laughs> that your legacy as a leader will live on through um, through being respected. Uh, being inclusive and being directive. This final question is trending on the show and it's my favorite. <laughs> if you could have a billboard with anything on it, what legacy message would you print on it and why? Um, I would say my legacy message would be uh, you know, don't give up on, uh, you know, don't give up on uh, individuals or judge individuals based upon early decisions mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, just based upon just maturity and life experiences, you know, can, you know, can shape them in differently. Um, and I say that because as a, a young educator, I didn't, and I'm not saying I have it all together now that I was um, mm -hmm. even look about my, my educational track from being um, a young adolescent that, you know, there were people that thought that would, I'll be another statistic. Um, mm. It's probably being very hyperactive. Sure. Um, that I needed special education services and not saying there's just anything wrong with that, but right. <clears throat> rather identif identify me rather than trying to see what, what's the, what's my interest and in understand so they can best reach me. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just being a, a young, a young educator at 22 years old who didn't have it all figured out was thrown into the classroom, mm -hmm. um, trying to engage students who never had, who have not never, who haven't had any type of interaction with a, with a black male outside of their ah, okay. dysfunctional relationship with their, with the male figures in their household. So now you're looking to, uh, I'm looking to try to teach someone who, children who in some, in most cases, don't know how to feel about a male telling them what to do because they never had it before. So either I'm being engaged or they're disengaged. And that's a really, you know, really tough. You know, this is a female dominated um, profession from for the most part. And especially within the black community, if you look at the places we go between church and school, um, it's been in, the, in their household is completely dominated by um, the, the black woman, which is totally fine. Mm -hmm. So now at 22 years old, I'm expected to engage with, with students who've never, you know, who, who have not consistently had positive interactions with, um, sure. with a male. So definitely um, just not ju judging individuals by their, their previous or you know prior experiences but coach and, and help them develop and mm. the trajectory will be positive yes indeed wow <laughs> i told you he was an overcomer folks <laughs> wow that that's that's powerful that is powerful well thank you so very much assistant principal pitt we enjoyed so much listening to your reflections on leadership 
and um, your mission and your vision and goals um, in leadership and in life. So we wish you the best of success as you continue through uh, 2020 is wrapping up and 2021 school year uh, has a lot of uncertainties, but it sounds like you are on the right path and have the right growth mindset to thrive during this time. Thank you again, ma'am. I really, again, I appreciate everything that you're doing. Um, I wish you all the success. And if there's anything I can do uh, to continue to push what your, your message and your brand, please allow me to be a part of that process. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm, I'm humbled. <laughs> no problem. All right. Have a great day. You too. Well, that concludes another episode of Coaching You Through All Things Education. As Confucius states, those people who develop the ability to continuously acquire new and better forms of knowledge that they can apply to their work and into their lives will be the movers and shakers in our society for the indefinite future. Again, you can find me on LinkedIn and Twitter, or you can also find us on our Facebook page, A&C Unlimited. As a reminder, for a free consultation in any area of education that you choose, for educators, administrators, or parents, please visit acunlimited.org. Until next time, stay stress-free and be well. Hello, this is Anne Labangana Clay, your podcast host for coaching you through all things education, as well as the founder of ANC Unlimited. I absolutely love using Anchor as my home. Let me tell you why. First of all, the creation tools allow me to record and edit my podcast right from my phone or my computer. Second of all, Anchor will distribute my podcast for me so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and of course now iHeartRadio. The third reason why Anchor is my home is because there is no cost to me when I create so I can create as many episodes and bonus episodes as I choose for my listeners. So my suggestion is that you sign up today at Anchor FM and start your own podcast. I'll see you Tuesday. 